Father, thank you for our time together this morning. Uh, we pray that you would just bring simplicity and clarity to today's message and that we would all be able to apply it to our lives. Amen. There is no place like home. There's no place like home. I am sure that since we have been in quarantine for over nine months now, some of you are probably saying, I can think of a whole lot of places I would rather be than at home, that I would rather be than in this house. Most of us are ready to get out. We're ready to leave home. Our story today comes from the book of Luke. It is a parable about a father who had two sons. The verses that we are gonna be looking at over the next few weeks are verses 11 through 32. So what I want you to do is, I want you to read these passages during the course of this week. I want you to read them over and over again. I want you to get them in your spirit. I want you to understand the parable. Today, we're gonna to focus specifically on uh, Luke 15, verses 11 to 17. Let's read those verses now. To illustrate the point further, Jesus told them this story. A man had two sons. The younger son told his father, I want my share of the estate now before you die. So his father agreed to divide his wealth between his sons. A few days later, this younger son packed all his belongings and moved to a distant land. And there he wasted all his money in wild living. About the time his money ran out, a great famine swept over the land and he began to starve. He persuaded a local farmer to hire him, and the man sent him into his fields to feed the pigs. The young man became so hungry that even the pods he was feeding the pigs looked good to him, but no one gave him anything. When he finally came to his senses, when he finally came to his senses, he said to himself, at home, even the hired servants have food enough to spare, and here I am dying of hunger. There is no place like home. Let me just go ahead and say right now that the younger son is all of us. All of us have said to our Heavenly Father, give us our inheritance now. Let us have the things that give us pleasure now. And we've all taken off, we packed up our stuff and we have gone to a foreign land. We have left the presence of the Father and we've gone to a foreign land. The question I have for us, the question I have for you today is how in the world could we possibly think that we know better than our Heavenly Father? How could we think we know what's best for, him, for us over what He thinks is best for us? I'm sure in this time of quarantine, you have said to your parents, uh, mom, dad, can I just go out and, and spend a little bit of time with some of my friends? Can I do this certain activity? Can I do that certain activity? I'll be really careful. I, I've, I've seen some of my friends, you know, maybe you've seen on social media, they posted some things they're doing and they're out and they're kind of in a small group and you're saying to yourself, it's not gonna hurt anything, can I just do that? And your parents have said to you, no, we're gonna do what's best for you. And you've kind of thought to yourself that maybe they didn't quite know what they were talking about. Maybe it would be okay. But I wanna ask you this, what if they actually said, okay, Okay, you can go and be with your friends. You can go be with your friends, but please, please be careful. Make sure that you wear your mask, make sure that you wash your hands, make sure that you social distance, make sure you do all the things that the guidelines have called us to do in this time of pandemic. What if they said that? What's the worst thing that could happen? Well, first of all, you would leave the safety of your parents' home. You would leave the protection that is in your parents' home. You would leave the, the security. You would leave the peace. You would leave all that your parents have provided for you in the home. You would leave the love that your parents have for you in the home. And you would be going out away from safety. 
Now, maybe you say, well, it's not that serious. I'm not running away. I'm not packing my bag like that younger son. I am coming back. What's the worst that could happen? Well, the worst that could happen is you could catch the virus. You could catch the virus and you could give it to someone else. You could bring it home to your parents. Someone could die. And isn't that what happened in the book of Genesis? Adam and Eve are like the younger son. Their heavenly father said, it's safety here if you follow these guidelines. And you, we know that Adam and Eve didn't follow the guidelines. Adam and Eve did what they thought were best for them. They went out into the garden, they, they grabbed of the fruit, they ate of it, and they caught that virus. They caught the virus of sin and someone died. They made a decision they thought was best for them. And aren't we like that as well? At some point in time, I think all of us think we know what is best for us, especially when it comes to our parents. I mean, let's just keep it real. You guys have probably said it to yourself, your parents really don't understand. They don't know what it's like to be a teenager, like they were never one before. And even if they were, things are so different now than when your parents were your age. And so you think you know what is best for you. You think you can take care of yourself best and you choose to follow after some of your fleshly passions over the protection and provision of your earthly parents and your heavenly father. Sometimes if we're honest, we, there's this thing we call the generation gap. And we literally feel like there is a gap in what the way we think and the way adults think, the way our parents think, and the way we think as teenagers. There's literally a gap. But listen to this verse in Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes 1.9, what has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. There is nothing new under the sun. So perhaps, just maybe, our parents know a little bit more than we give them credit for. Maybe they know what is best for us in a given time because of experiences they have had. Now, I know experiences are different. Sometimes, you know, we, we choose to do what's best for us. We sneak and do some things. We, we right out, flat out, refuse to do what our parents ask us to do. But I wanna challenge you today and I want you to be challenged by this parable. God cares for every single individual. That's why he shares this parable. Your earthly parents care for you, they love you, and they should. So when we are giving thoughts to some of the things they tell us to do, keep in mind, that perhaps they are protecting us from some dangers down the road that we cannot see. The young son in our story wanted to leave home. He wanted his inheritance, he wanted to go out. We find out what happened to him. We hear that, you know, he lost all of his money. Um, he, he was hungry, he had to, he wanted to eat the stuff the pigs were eating, but he couldn't even do that. And the Bible says he came to his senses. He came back to his right mind, to his spiritual mind, and he decided to return home. God, in this story, is the father. We are the younger children, and God knows what's best for us. He loves us, just as our earthly parents do, and he makes decisions based on that love for us. Those decisions are returning us back to him. That father in the story waited. He waited daily and he prayed daily for that younger son. And when that younger son returned, he was waiting to embrace him. God is waiting for us to return to him. He's waiting for us to trust him. And he is waiting for us to come back to our senses. I pray that we would focus more on believing that God loves us rather than looking at the chaos and all the stuff going on around us. May we have peace during this time of pandemic and social chaos. May we have peace by trusting in our Heavenly Father and trusting in our parents. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for this parable, for this story of a father who is you, God, 
a father who loves his children, all of them, every single one is special to you, God. So in this time of chaos, in this time of pandemic, in this time when there's so much disturbance and insurrection, God, I pray that we will find peace, safety, and comfort in you because you are the home and there's no place like home. Amen.